Is Hyunjin Ryu broken? Let's talk about it. Plus, we have Week 15 Sleepers next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Friday, July 2nd. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And Hyunjin Ryu now has a 5.35 ERA over his last six starts with, wait for it, Just 16 strikeouts over 35 and a third innings pitch. That is quite bad. Scott, is Hyunjin Ryu broken? I don't think so. Whatever's going on with him seems like... Seems like a small thing. I mean, the results are obviously way different. He had four strikeouts per nine innings in the month of June compared to 8.9 per nine before that. So, you know, obviously that's a big difference. But uh, velocity, the spin rates, which is notable, they seem about the same. Doesn't seem like his his curveball uh, is getting as much whiffs as he's used to the cutter as well. They seem to be lacking, obviously. He's losing whiffs on something. But... You know, what is that? Is that a, is he in need of a slight mechanical adjustment or maybe it's a pitch tipping situation or maybe he's just missing his spots a little bit because uh, he's such a, he, he relies on like fine command. That's really been his game. He's never been a big, big bat misser. He's, you know, just been kind of an average bat misser, gets ground balls, throws strikes. That's the kind of the formula for success for Hyunjin Ryu. And, um, you know, it could be worse. <laughs> his strikeout rate dropping that much. Um, that the ERA is just a little over five during that stretch, I think you said. Could be a lot worse. Uh, I don't think he's unstartable right now, but I would rather, you know, rather bench him if possible. Yeah, we're not dropping Hyunjin Ryu, anything like that. Next week, he's going up against the Orioles. They're actually really good against left-handed pitching, so I would try to get Ryu on my bench for that one. We have a prospect who is being called up on Friday, Luis Patino with the Tampa Bay Rays, and he has allowed zero earned runs over his last three starts at AAA. The strikeouts are up. The walks are down. He's 25% rostered. Scott, where would you be looking to add Luis Patino? Anywhere I needed pitching. This is a pretty exciting prospect. We've seen him in the majors a couple times already. So, you know, you're, you're missing that. He, he, he doesn't have that new car smell anymore, I guess. And so you're, you're maybe, he's maybe not going to generate as much hype because of that. But uh, went five innings in each of his last three AAA starts. So he's pretty well stretched out. He struck out 11 in his most recent one. And really his stay with the Rays earlier this season had a good K rate. He was mostly a 2-3 inning pitcher. But they need him to be more than that now. They their their pitching staff has been hit pretty hard, uh, and and Patino has the talent to to maybe maybe make an impact much like Shane McClanahan has made for them. And you know it's too late to pick up McClanahan, but hopefully Luis Patino can be something like that. Scott, how would you rank Patino, Zach Thompson, and Kyle Muller, who have all been pretty popular pickups recently? So. I think I'm going to put Patino at the back of that group until I see how the Rays are handling him. But man, that's tough. He he has the best pedigree, Patino does, of the three. But I've been really impressed by what I've seen from Zach Thompson. Kyle Muller showed good strikeout potential in the minors. Had a great strikeout start. His second major league start looked really good last time. Uh, so I think, you know, it's very close between the three. But I think I'll have Patino at the back end for now. Could make up a lot of ground in short order, though. All right, let's get people ready for week 15. Who are some sleeper pitchers that you're looking at for next week, Scott? So of the two-star variety, I like John Gray at Arizona at San Diego. Those are one great matchup, one pretty good matchup, and and they're both on the road, which I always prefer for Rockies pitchers. He's looked really good since coming off the IL, missing more bats. Uh, Jamison Tyone, one of his two matchups at Seattle, one at Houston. Those are polar opposites, but... I think he's usable if you're in a head-to-head points league anyway. Colby Allard, he's available in more than 80% of leagues versus Detroit. That's a good matchup versus Oakland. Not as much, but Allard has been a pretty consistent pitcher, about a strikeout per. Doesn't pitch that deep into games. Uh, But for a two-start week, I I think he's fine. I'm also intrigued about Tony Gonsolin at Miami versus Arizona. Two great matchups, obviously. But he was used as a bulk reliever in his latest turn. Only went three innings. I don't know how many innings he's going to give you in those two starts or relief appearances, whatever they end up being. Uh, Real quick, Scott, who are some sleeper hitters that you like for next week? 
So the Phillies have the best matchups. I think Andrew McCutcheon coming off a very strong June where he improved his numbers against right-handed pitchers. I think he's a, a fine play. Uh, with uh, The Red Sox have three lefties on the schedule. Hunter Renfro has been hot. He crushes lefties. He's good. David Fletcher, four lefties on the schedule for the Angels. He also performs well against lefties. Um, Cleveland uh, and the White Sox, they both have good matchups. So Bobby Bradley, Ahmed Rosario, Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets, a recent call-up, even somebody like Harold Ramirez. Those look like pretty good plays for this week. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again Monday morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.